negative feedback sounds like a bad thing, right? Well, actually, it's not bad at all. In fact, it's a very important process that occurs in our bodies all the time. But what does it actually do? What does negative feedback mean? It's all to do with homeostasis. Homeostasis maintains a constant internal environment so that important functions and processes in the body can be carried out properly. We looked at homeostasis in more detail in this video. Homeostasis stops us getting too hot or too cold and ensures we are breathing enough to bring in sufficient oxygen and maintains the salt levels within our bodies. Negative feedback is an important type of control that is found in homeostasis, keeping different values around a constant set point. It's a continuous cycle. Very simply put, you get too hot. Your body detects that is hot. Your body turns on mechanisms to cool itself down. You cool down, the mechanisms are turned off again, and you're back to the start. It's called negative feedback because the stimulus, you being too hot, causes an opposite reaction by the body, so cooling you down. Let's now look at it in a little more detail. Negative feedback involves the hypothalamus, the part of the brain that is responsible for homeostasis. Whether it's temperature, regulation, blood pressure, blood sugar, photosynthesis in plants, it always follows the same steps. A change in a given variable occurs, so either an increase or a decrease. Receptor cells in the body detect this change in a variable. A correction mechanism is then activated, which aims to adjust the variable back to the set point at which it is meant to be, so reversing the change that had occurred. Once the variable returns to the set point level, the correction mechanism stops. It's cyclical and constantly occurring in the body. Now let's look at an example to see what kind of correction mechanisms we have within the body. Different types of stimulus will trigger different responses. We're going to look at blood sugar levels in more detail. We need glucose in our bloodstream for respiration, but too much or too little can be dangerous. This is where negative feedback comes in. When an animal has eaten, blood glucose levels in the body increase. Receptor cells in the pancreas detect this change. This stimulates the release of insulin. Insulin is a hormone that causes the absorption of glucose from the blood, which is changed into glycogen by the liver where it can then be stored. This causes the blood glucose levels to fall until they return to the set point. This is detected by receptor cells in the pancreas and the secretion of insulin is stopped. If the blood glucose level then fall too low, this is then detected by different receptor cells in the pancreas, but now a different hormone called glucagon is released. Glucagon stimulates the liver to change glycogen back to glucose, which can then be released into the bloodstream blood glucose levels increase again. This change is recognized by receptor cells and if the blood glucose levels reach the desired set point, the release of glucagon is stopped. Negative feedback is a continuous balancing act. So there we have negative feedback. The important thing to remember about negative feedback is that it's a circle. Some variable changes from the set point and then we correct it by returning to the set point, which is where we started. To learn more about temperature regulation and water balance in the body, watch these two videos. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Comment below if you have any questions. Why not check out our Fusco app as well? Until next time.